Man, rolling these rings sure is making my forearms burn. So I said to myself, I really wish there was some way to power this thing instead of hand cranking on it. Well, I've had some ideas, so let me show them to you. A hundred to one gearbox and three quarter horse motor. That ought to get it. Isn't that a little big? Eh? No, I said powered, not hand powered. Die grinder? I don't think so. Fine, what about putting a drill on it? No. 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 All right, I've only got one thing left. Hydraulic motor. That's a good idea. So my thinking is to pull off this wheel and take my line boring motor, stick it on there. I have to make a coupler, apparently. And then I think I might just stick a rod or two bolts or something through this to where it can pin or slide fork over the edge of this table here so it can still have some play for adjusting this up and down, but it won't spin around. So when you look around, this is a 7 8 shaft and this is a 3 quarter inch shaft. So I need to see if I have something handy or if I need to make something to adapt over. It'd be nice if I had like a, well no it wouldn't be nice. I would say it'd be nice if I had a Lovejoy coupler, but that wouldn't work because it would want to just fall off of there. What I'm thinking about doing is just cutting two inches off of this random piece of scrap I had laying here. This happens to be inch and five eighths shaft. Bore it clear through with three quarter and then bore one side out to seven eighths. Put a keyway in it and then put a cross hole in it for that bolt on that. It's now the next morning. Got called off on some other work yesterday. Never got back to this. But we have a three-quarter inch hole. Bored all the way through this. If you notice, I just center drilled it. Then went through a three-quarter inch bit. Didn't use a smaller bit. And now I'm going to put a seven-eighths bit in. And then bore it out with just a seven-eighths bit about halfway. Seven-eighths. There's one inch. Yeah, yeah, that actually drilled oversize a lot. Whee! That's a nice tight fit on that side. A little bit of play on that three-quarter side. Woo! That's okay. For this application, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. All right. I think the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, broach this three-quarter side. Whoopsie daisy. Got a pretty good keyway going, first pass. So we'll put in our shim and go again. I like to relieve a little pressure once in a while. Make sure that brooch isn't binding.
Oh, that ain't going off the side. And this center drill is not sharp. Oh, there it goes. went all the way through. That was nice. I can feel a burr in there, so I doubt it'll fit back on that shaft. I think to keep this thing from moving around, so sort of clamping it out here on the edge like I had it, I think I can just stick it on that bolt hole and drop a bolt in it. Now I just put the washer and nut on the bottom side, tighten it up. I'll keep this thing from going somewhere. Alrighty, uh, this is my setup. Got my power pack sitting down here. It's a three quarter horse, 110 volt power pack that produces one gallon per minute of oil flow. Maybe. I'm not even sure it does that. Goes up to the valve there. It's got clamped to the table. Then goes through the hoses into the motor for my line boring rig, which will turn this thing. To hold this down over here, I just decided to slip that into a piece of uh, square tubing, rectangular tubing technically, as you can see. And uh, I think I'll be just fine. So I'm excited to try this out. If you notice when I pull the lever, the rod I'm trying to bend doesn't go the same direction as the lever. This was confusing me. And it didn't take me too long to realize I need to flip the motor hoses around so the lever and the rod are moving the same direction. That thing works awesome. I don't even know what else to say there than that thing works awesome. Ha! All right, I hope you all enjoyed this quick little video. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>